Starting off at number 10 now, we have the visitor. This one comes from a Reddit user called Fan and Depressed. They posted this picture with the caption, got a notification from my smart home app in the middle of the night saying, your doorbell detected a visitor. That's all he put and that's all that was needed. He posted it to the creepy subreddit but it has gained over 34,000 upvotes. One of the top comments said, why are you doing this? Because you were home. That's a quote from the movie Strangers, where some twisted home invaders give their reason for terrorizing a woman in her home. It's a great movie and yeah, it does remind me of this too. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to see this on your phone app in the middle of the night? There was no follow up story to this, I just hope they were alright. Next up at number 9 now we have The Mummified Captain. This is the disturbing story of Manfred Fritz Bajorat, a German man who was found in his boat by two fishermen off the coast of the Philippines. He was dead. His corpse had been preserved by dry ocean winds, hot temperatures and the salty sea air. It could not be determined how long he had been dead for but he hadn't been seen by anyone for 7 years. Years. He'd actually been sailing the world on his yacht for the past 20 years. It's thought that from the way he was sitting, death was unexpected, perhaps from a heart attack. The police said there was no evidence of a second person aboard and no weapon was found on board the yacht. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Home. This is a 1948 picture of a girl who grew up in a Nazi concentration camp. Now She was asked to draw what home was and this is what she drew. The photograph was taken by David Seymour in a home for emotionally disturbed children located in Warsaw. Not much is known about the girl other than her name, Teresa. The swirling lines are a stark reminder of horrors of the Holocaust. More than one and a half million Jewish children were killed in the Holocaust. Those that survived often ended up like Teresa, lost shocked and unable to grasp a simple concept like home. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Obsession. George Karl Tanzler was a radiology technician from Germany. He moved to Florida where he married Maria de Hoyos, a local Cuban American woman. She died of tuberculosis 5 years later despite his best efforts to save her. He wouldn't accept her death though. After her funeral, George dug up Maria's body and took her to his home. He attempted to preserve her. This is the picture of his efforts. He attached her bones together with wire and coat hangers and fitted her face with glass eyes. He replaced her skin with silk cloth soaked in wax. He gave her a wig and filled her insides with rags. He covered her in jewellery and the smell was masked with copious amounts of perfume. The body was eventually discovered by authorities a full 9 years after he first removed her from her resting place. Next up at number 6 now we have the catacombs. This is a very disturbing picture. Please look away now if you're sensitive to death and all that kind of thing. This is the story of Masha, a Ukrainian woman who went out with a large group of friends to celebrate New Year's Eve in 2005. It was a foggy night with temperatures around freezing. The group stumbled into the Odessa Catacombs, an ancient tunnel and cave system that spans for over 1,500 miles. Somehow, Masha became separated from her group and got lost in the dark. She seems to have wandered for days with no food or water before slipping into a coma and then death. Her body wasn't discovered for months until this picture was taken by some local boys who found her. Still, she wasn't retrieved by authorities for a further two years. When a story was shared on Reddit, people tried to imagine how terrifying it must be to be lost in the dark like that, pitch black darkness, unable to see any difference between your eyes being closed and open and totally alone. Moving on to number 5 now, we have shell shocked. In World War 1, there were hundreds of thousands of soldiers who got shell shock, a type of PTSD brought on from the endless bombardment they had to endure. Ten of thousands of soldiers were treated for the disorder. Victims were said to have a thousand yard stare, looking into the distance as their mind went blank. Here is a famous picture from a soldier during the Battle of the Somme, a battle which killed three million men. This man appears to be suffering from shell shock. He has a crazed look in his eyes that is often associated with those who had shell shock. It's an image that has become increasingly associated with war, especially the hell that was World War One. Next up at number 4 now we have the subway. In 2012, the New York Post ran a story with this picture. It was of Ki Suk Han, a 58 year old man who was pushed onto the tracks by a stranger. He was fatally struck by a train seconds later. The suspect was 30 year old Naeem Davis who confessed to pushing the innocent man onto the tracks. The picture shocked New Yorkers and people around the world. Why was someone taking a picture instead of trying to help? Should the New York Post even have ran that story and published that picture? What do you guys think? Next up at number 3 now we have Madame Violet. This is a picture 
of Violet Spears, otherwise known as Madame Violet. She was the leader of a group of real life vampires in Edinburgh in the late 19th century. They were called the Hive. They became known as lovely but dangerous partiers, seducing men and women with drugs and alcohol and then making them donate their blood to them, so to speak. Some of the victims even joined the Hive and she became their leader too. In 1882 and 1884, she was apparently voted the scariest woman in England, even though she never left Scotland. That's how scary she is. She scared another country she didn't even live in. Moving on to number two now, we have the vulture and the little girl. On March 26, 1993, the New York Times shared a picture known as Struggling Girl. It showed a famine stricken boy, initially believed to be a girl who had collapsed from malnutrition during a famine in South Sudan. In the background, a vulture waits patiently. These birds have a keen sense of death and this one has its eyes on the boy. The picture shocked the world. The photographer Kevin Carter was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his photography. He actually killed himself just four months later. The reasons are largely unknown, but many people speculate that pictures like this can drive anyone down a dark path. And finally, number one now, we have the Hiroshima shadows. When the US dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan's Hiroshima, over 100,000 people were killed. Some of them who were close enough were literally vaporized into thin air. The intense heat of the explosion caused what's now called nuclear shadows. The blast forever change services because of the UV radiation. Services that were blocked by people look different to its surroundings, leaving a sort of permanent shadow of the person who was vaporized. This is one of the most striking images for me. What appears to be an old person stood at the bottom of the steps. You can even see the cane in their hand. It's a shocking reminder of how destructive weapons of war have become, how quickly life can be snuffed out in an instant, leaving only a shadow behind. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Hampton Court Palace Ghost. In December 2003, security cameras at Hampton Court Palace in England had a problem with a fire door that just kept opening when nobody else was around. They decided to check the security tapes and to their absolute horror, these are the images they saw. Some sort of skeletal figure opening the doors before retreating back inside. A spokesperson for the palace assured the public that this was not a joke and they have not manufactured these pictures, saying they genuinely do not know who or what it is. Moving on to number 9 now, we have Bud Dwyer. He was a politician and treasurer for Pennsylvania who was exposed for receiving money from a computer technology company so that he would steer a government contract in their favour. He faced a sentence of up to 50 five years in prison and a $300,000 fine. He arranged a news conference with dozens of reporters attending, although they were not told what the purpose of it was. Many expected him to just resign, but the reality was much more shocking. After a 30 minute speech, Dwyer produced a magnum revolver. That's the moment this picture was taken as Dwyer tried to warn reporters to not intervene. Before they could, Dwyer put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger, killing himself instantly. Most media outlets chose to not show the full footage and many newspapers just posted this now famous image. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the Cooper family photo. This is a fairly famous one that many of you guys may have seen. I know I've talked about it somewhere. The story goes that in the 1950s, the Cooper family of Texas bought an old house and moved into it. On their first night there, they took a photo of the mum and grandma posing with two kids at the dining room table. When they developed the picture though, this is what they saw. Some sort of dark body was falling from the ceiling behind them. People have been trying to figure out what's going on with this picture ever since it first started circulating online in about 2009. Others have said that the picture is a complete fake due to the lack of information about it and also clues that it's been photoshopped. Still a scary one either way. Coming in at number 7 now, we have The Schoolboy. This one was shared by Reddit user in the Lion's Main. He said he comes from a small rural town near some mountains. One day an old school was being torn down. A family friend went there and he took this picture with his phone. He didn't see the boy standing there until later on. The whole family was freaked out beyond belief. Standing right there was what looked like the actual spirit of a little boy. His face was clearly defined but his body began to fade around his torso until his legs just tapered away. What do you guys make of this one? Is this a former student rising up to say a last goodbye before his old school disappears forever? Next to number 6 now we have John Torrington. He was a British officer who took part in an Arctic 
expedition in 1846 but died of pneumonia aged 22. Nobody knew what happened to the crew until some of their graves were found on a remote Canadian island. In the 1980s, scientists dug through almost 5 feet of permafrost until they hit a coffin. They opened it up and this was staring back at them, the body of John Torrington, quite literally frozen in time. The eyes were open, still bright and blue, his skin was battered and bruised but barely decomposed. The arctic climate had acted like a perfect freezer. Scientists took samples to study and then buried his body as they found it where it could still look the same to this day. We have the demon. This one has been circulating online for a number of years now but the origins of it are a bit of a mystery. It was taken in a hospital room shortly before a patient died. You can just about make out the patient lying in the bed but the most shocking thing is what's standing on the bed. Some sort of demonic figure hunched over with huge twisted limbs. Many who have shared the picture claim that it's not just some sort of demonic like figure, they say it's an actual picture of a demon caught tormenting a patient and trying to take them to hell in the last few hours of their life. Next up at number 4 now we have the Amityville Ghost. This photo was allegedly taken inside the famous Amityville house in 1976. That house was the site of a brutal murder of a family and many paranormal investigators have been drawn to it ever since. It features what appears to be a a young boy peeking out of a doorway. The picture was taken by an automatic camera that took infrared pictures to capture the second floor landing during the night. This picture of the Amityville ghost boy has left some speculating that it could be the ghost of the murdered child of the family, John DeFeo, who had lived in the house with his family prior to the current occupants. Others say this is an accidental picture taken of one of the investigators, but it certainly looks like a little boy to me. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the Grand Canyon. This picture was posted to Reddit by user Zombie. Gaddafi. He said it was a photograph of his uncle at the Grand Canyon. At first glance, it looks like a normal picture, that is until you notice the hooded man standing in the bushes. Neither the photographer or the uncle noticed the man standing there. In fact, they swear there was nobody else even in the area, leading many to believe that the explanation for this appearance must belong to the paranormal. Coming in at number 2 now, we have the Phoenix Lights. In 1997, thousands of people witnessed floating lights all over the city of Phoenix. This was the famous event that really hasn't had much press ever since. Witnesses claim to have observed a huge arrow shaped UFO containing 5 spherical lights or possibly light emitting engines on. Even the governor of the time who saw the lights described them as otherworldly. One UFO advocate claimed to have performed a spectral analysis of the photographs that apparently proved the lights could not have been produced by a man made source. Explanations since have ranged from military flares to atmospheric conditions and yes, of course, visitors from another planet. What do you make of them? And finally number 1 now we have Jeremy Bentham. He was an English philosopher known as the founder of modern utilitarianism. When he died in 1932, he left his body to science and then for it to be permanently preserved for display. It all went well except for his head. The story goes that the taxidermy process left his face looking horrifying after a while. As it was on display and the authorities didn't want to alarm people, his head was replaced with a wax substitute. For some reason though, they decided to put his real head on the floor between his own legs. This is the sight that visitors saw on their arrival before people realised that it's probably best to just store the scary looking head someplace else. Alright and finally I'm going to do a bonus one now because I actually had too many if you can believe it. This one is called Combustion. This is a shocking image from December 1966. It's the remains of the body of 92 year old Dr. J. Irving Bentley. He was discovered in his Pennsylvania home by someone who was coming to read the meter. This is the scene they found. All that was left was Dr. Bentley's leg and slippered foot. The rest of him had been burned to ashes from an unknown internal chemical reaction. In the years since, many have held this picture up as a prime example of spontaneous combustion, a mysterious event in which some people seem to explode and burn on the spot for seemingly no reason at all. Maybe you have the explanation for this one though, I'd love to know. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Edward Paisnell. He's also known as the Beast of Jersey. He was a notorious sex offender who terrorised people on the island of Jersey in the English Channel between 1960 and 1971. This is what he wore when breaking into people's homes at night, a rubber mask and nail studded wristlets. He would attack women and children. He was convicted of 13 counts of assault. Sadly that is thought to be only the tip of the iceberg and there are perhaps many more victims than that. Paisnell was sentenced to 30 years in prison and later died on the Isle of Wight in 1994. Next up at number 9 now we have Blanche Monnier. In 1901 the Paris Attorney General received 
received an anonymous letter saying that a woman in Paris was being held prisoner against her will. When police arrived at the scene, this was what they saw. Blanche had been locked away in a secret room by her own mother for 25 years. She hadn't even seen sunlight in all of that time. In 1876, at the age of 25, her mother had locked her away after she tried to marry a lawyer who was not to her mother's liking. Her mother and brother continued living their lives after that, pretending to mourn the loss of Blanche, but the whole time she was living in this secret room. When police found her, the mother was arrested, she became ill and died 15 days later. Her brother was found to be mentally incapacitated. As for Blanche, she suffered from mental health problems and lived out the next 12 years of her life in a psychiatric hospital before dying at the age of 64. Next up at number 8 now, we have Reynaldo Dagza. He was a politician from the Philippines who photographed his family outside of their home on New Year's Day. The moment he took this photo, he was shot and killed by the man you can see in the background of this picture. A member of the past away gang claimed to have shot him as retribution for being shot in the head by some of his associates during a shootout months earlier. Now this picture is thought to actually be one of the only examples, if not the only example, of someone capturing their own assassination on film. How mental is that? Moving on to number 7 now, we have Rodney Alcala. He's an American convicted rapist and serial killer who was sentenced to death in California in 2010 for five murders committed there between 1977 and 1979. In 1978, he was a contestant on the ABC game show The Dating Game. Here's a picture of him on the show. It's made even more chilling when you realize that by this point, he had already killed two women. The host introduced him as a successful photographer who got his start when his father found him in the dark room at the age of 13, fully developed. Between takes, you might find him skydiving or motorcycling. He won a date with a contestant on the show called Cheryl Bradshaw. She later refused to go out with him because she found him creepy. Yeah. Seems that her instincts were 100% accurate on that one. Coming at number 6 now, we have Electrical Charge. Now at first glance, this picture looks like quite a wholesome one. It's a picture of 18 year old Michael McQuilkin and his 12 year old brother Sean. The year was 1975 and they had just climbed California's Morro Rock Mountain. Their hair that's standing up from the Electrical Charge is a sure sign that a lightning strike is about to occur. They didn't heed the warning from nature though and just moments after this picture was taken, they were struck by a lightning. Now, some online articles claim that they died, but this wasn't the case. In an interview decades later, Michael said he remembers a flash of white light as bright as arc wielding, a deafening explosion, and the feeling of becoming weightless and being lifted off the ground. They were knocked unconscious and suffered third degree burns, but learnt their lesson for life. Moving on to number five now, we have Omeira Sanchez. She was a 13 year old Colombian girl killed in the aftermath of the 1985 eruption of the Nevada del Ruiz volcano. After her home was destroyed, she was pinned beneath the debris of her own house where she remained trapped in water for three days. When authorities found her, she was in good spirits. They attempted to pull her out but found the task impossible without breaking her legs in the process. Each time a person tried to pull her up, the water pulled around her, rising so that it seemed she would drown if they let her go. They found that her legs were caught under a door made of bricks with her dead aunt's arms clutched tightly around her legs. Sanchez eventually died as a result of either gangrene or hypothermia, the photographer felt the photo was a way to report properly on the courage and the suffering and the dignity of this little girl. Next up at number 4 now, we have Columbine. This picture may look like a normal school photo, but it has a dark story attached to it. It is the class of 99 in Columbine School, taken just a few weeks before the infamous school shooting there that killed 12 students and one teacher, as well as injuring a further 21 people. The shooters were Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. In this picture, they can be seen in the top left with their friends pretending to shoot guns. This school shooting is regarded as one of the deadliest high school massacres in US history and sparked debates over gun control laws, high school cliques, subcultures and bullying. Next up at number 3 now we have Goebbels glare. This is a picture of Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister and a close friend of Adolf Hitler's. The picture was taken in 1933 during a League of Nations meeting. The picture captures the exact moment that Goebbels realised 
that the photographer, Alfred Eisen stated, was Jewish. The hatred in Goebbels eyes tells the story of a man who pushed Nazi propaganda onto Germans in order to control them and pave the way for the Holocaust in the years to come. Twelve years after this photo was taken, on May 1st 1945, with the Russian army closing in on Berlin and the Nazis defeated, Goebbels and his wife administered cyanide to their six children before also killing themselves. Next up at number 2 now we have animal abuse. This is a picture that will enrage any animal lovers out there. It's of Alina Savchenko. She and her friend Alina Orlova were accused of torturing and killing cats and dogs for occult sexual fetish videos that were sent to China. How bizarre is that sentence? The Russian pair were linked to the case after police linked Orlova to the videos because of a distinctive hand tattoo. They tried to flee as the story gathered over the images but were eventually detained under house arrest. When she was detained, Savchenko called herself the Devil's Duchess. In one picture, she is shown holding a recently killed puppy's heart with the caption, It's for you, Anubis, a reference to the ancient Egyptian god of the dead. And finally, the more one now, we have Panama. We're going to look at more than one picture here, there's quite a few. They are of Dutch tourists Chris Kremers and Lisanne Froon. In 2014, the pair went missing after taking a day hike near the town of Boquet in Panama. These pictures were found on their recovered camera, which contains over 100 photos, all taken within 10 days of the girls going missing. Some locals found bone fragments and a backpack believed to be owned by one of them. Later, DNA tests confirmed that the remains did belong to them. The last few pictures are perhaps the most disturbing, taken in the middle of the night in the jungle a full 8 days after the girls went missing. Many people were stumped by the mystery of what happened to them and why they were taking pictures of the jungle after 8 days of being lost. The leading theory is that they fell off a cliff, injuring one of them so that she couldn't move. The uninjured one then waited with her friend for 8 days before leaving her. Why leave in the middle of the night though? Well, some people think something scared her into suddenly leaving. Perhaps a jaguar or other predator. In the end, though, both of them died, and these pictures are the only creepy clues as to piecing together what happened. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the uninvited guest. This is a creepy picture originally posted to Reddit. The user said that everyone in this picture knew each other at the party. All the people you see in the light, well, everyone except for one single person. In case you haven't spotted it yet, take a look at the far right of this picture. There you can see a boy with glowing eyes. He's standing in the shadows and appears almost translucent. The person who took this picture said they posted it to Facebook the next day and asked every single other person in the picture if they knew who that face belonged to. No matter how hard they tried, none of them did. While some of them have chosen to forget the picture altogether, others who were there that night have never been able to forget that boy's face. They believe it's the spirit of a child from years before wanting to get in on the party. Blech. Moving on now to number 9, we have Pogo the Clown. Now, For many people, this picture by itself may be terrifying enough. It's a picture taken of Pogo the Clown, taken sometime in the 1970s. Even for an old picture, there's something not quite right about it. People just feel uncomfortable when they view it, and there may be a very good reason for that. The man behind the clown makeup is actually John Wayne Gacy, one of America's most notorious serial killers. During the 1970s in Chicago, he lured 14 young men and boys to his home and tortured them before killing them. He hid their bodies in the crawl space of his own home where he lived with his wife and two children. They had no idea what was going on. By day though, he was Pogo the Clown, appearing at local children's parties to entertain them or potentially even scope them out. He was so popular that he even met the mayor who thanked him for all the joy that he spread. In 1994, he was sentenced to death by lethal injection. One of his final quotes from an interview was simply, The dead won't bother you, it's the living you have to worry about. Moving on now to number 8, we have Telling Grandin. That's the name of the old scrapbook where this picture comes from. Its 28 pages contain photographs collected by an Evanston, Illinois group during a visit by train to the New Orleans Carnival of 1903. Perhaps in person and viewed in the context of their own time, this picture of a woman in a dress and a mask would seem entertaining, I guess. Many people these days though feel quite the opposite about it. Some have described it as very disturbing, creepy and deeply unsettling. It's been over a hundred years since this picture of a carnival goer was taken and yet the picture has found its way into many lists like this and keeps people coming back to study it and examine why exactly it's so very creepy. For me though, it's those eyes, or rather lack of eyes. What do you guys think? Moving on to number 7 now, we have Omar. Of all the pictures in this video, I don't know many
many that seem as unassuming as this one when you first look at it. This is a picture taken in the town of Oma, Northern Ireland. It was taken on the 15th of August 1998, a day that would go down in history. Nobody in this picture knew that the red Vauxhall car parked right there actually contained a bomb inside. It was placed there by a splinter group of the IRA who opposed the ceasefire that ended the troubles in Northern Ireland a year before. They had phoned the police to tell them about the bomb so that they could move people away. Warnings were inaccurate though and police had inadvertently moved people towards that red car with the bomb in. Moments after this picture was taken, the 500 pound bomb went off. 29 people were killed, over 200 were injured. Incredibly, the man and the child in the foreground of this picture survived, but the person who took the picture was killed. Next to number 6 now we have Gas Mask. There are rumours that this creepy picture comes from a small Japanese island where locals are forced to wear gas masks to protect themselves from the toxic fumes of a nearby volcano. In reality though, it appears to be a picture showing members of the Young Pioneers Youth Group in Soviet Russia donning their gas masks during a civil defence drill near Leningrad in 1937. The government ran group took this picture as a sign of strength meant to show the whole world the efficiency and preparedness of the youth organisation. For many people though, it's just a haunting image of faceless children staring you down. Coming in number 5 now, we have Tyler Hadley. I find this picture very disturbing. Again, it's one of those pictures that needs the backstory for you to truly understand how dark it is. The guy on the right is Tyler Hadley, age 17 at the time. He had sent a text out to his friends earlier that night, inviting them to a party at his family home in Port St. Lucie, Florida. He finished off the text by saying, don't worry, parents won't be here. That sentence is incredibly scary when you learn that Hadley had just beaten his own parents to death with a craw hammer in their own bedroom. He then partied with his friends on the ground floor of the house. None of them had any idea what had happened. One of them actually took this now infamous picture with Hadley himself. He then told one of his friends what he had done. The friend found the bloody bodies in the bedroom and called the police. Tyler was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Moving on to number four now, we have ectoplasm. This picture is said to be from a medium in a trance while contacting the dead. The strange substance streaming across the picture is allegedly ectoplasm. For many years, photos like this were quite common, claiming to show ectoplasm oozing from orifices in the medium's body. They claim that spiritual entities drape this substance over their non-physical body, enabling them to interact in the physical and real universe. Among modern day believers though, this picture has become famous due to its mysterious origins. Nobody is quite sure who the onlooker is. Nobody knows who the spiritual medium is. Some people even speculate that they are not a willing participant in this, that they do not want to enter into the trance and speak to the dead. Either way, the striking picture is enough to jog anyone's imagination. Next up number 3 now, we have the hidden mother. This is a picture of a very common practice back in Victorian times. Back then, early cameras had slow exposure times. They required the subject to stay still for a long period of time. Obviously, this is very difficult to do with children. They rarely sit still. If the family wanted to have a picture of just the children, this is what they would do. The hidden mother trick. The photographer would cover the mother in a shawl so they could sit there and hold their child still. It was a popular technique at the time, but it's left us with many creepy pictures like this. Moving on to number two now, we have Travis Alexander. This is the last ever picture taken of Travis Alexander. It was taken by his ex-girlfriend Jodie Arias while he showered. Moments after the picture was taken, she stabbed him nearly 30 times, severing his jugular vein. She then shot him in the head with a shotgun. A medical examiner later determined that he was likely already dead before the gunshot wound was inflicted. This had come after she had stalked him, accessed his Facebook account and slashed his car tires. Some people have said that by zooming in on Travis's eye, you can actually see Jodie Arias before she attacked. She was charged with first degree murder in 2013 and sentenced to life in prison. And finally number one now, we have the vampire heart. This is the mummified heart of an alleged vampire called August de la Grange. He was said to be responsible for the deaths of more than 40 people in the early 1900s in Louisiana. The victims were all found dismembered in their own homes. One thing the crime scenes all had in common was the distinct lack of blood present at the scene. After police efforts to catch the murderer yielded no results, locals began to believe that the murderer was actually actually a vampire. A local Catholic priest called Father Henry Yante took it upon himself to bring an end to these murders. During his investigation, he claims to have met minions of the vampire who confessed that August de la Grange was the head vampire. The priest confronted him in his home and drove a wooden stake through his heart. Today, his skeleton and heart can be seen at the Vampire Museum in New Orleans. Coming 
in at number 10 we have the Roswell images. Now these are the most famous pictures of aliens supposedly ever taken although they have widely been hailed as a hoax. In 1947 the official story goes that a United States Army Air Forces balloon crashed into a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico. Ufologists were saying that the crash was actually a flying saucer and that these aliens are what came from the wreckage. The conspiracy goes that the aliens were taken to Area 51 where they were tested and probed by the United States government. Some former employees have sworn this was the situation. Between 1947 and 1970, interest in Roswell was at an all time high. These days, it has largely been put to bed as a myth. Blockbuster film Independence Day to the TV series Roswell and a two part X Files episode. In 1995, the Roswell incident was back in the headlines when Alien Autopsy, Fact or Fiction, aired on network television. It showed what was said to be military doctors performing an autopsy on an alien corpse recovered from the Roswell crash in 1947. Well, next up, this absolutely sent the internet into a frenzy, didn't it? At number nine, we have the Reddit reveal. In 2015, a scary picture was posted on Reddit of what looks like a dead baby animal. What animal? We just don't know, but it certainly looks recently deceased to me. The caption for this image was, friend found this outside her house, WTF. Like what even is this? Is this some kind of alien that crash landed outside a person's home or a deformed baby something? A deformed baby alien maybe. Some people say that it is a deer fetus, others are saying that it's a straight up alien. I guess it's hard to silence someone after a picture's already gone viral on reddit. One commenter wrote, I've seen this movie before, everyone dies. Yikes. Coming into number 8, is this an alien in Portugal? An image of a strange man like creature slowly strolling through a desert in Portugal surfaced in 2016 with footage to boot. The creature has a bent back, a small head, and long arms and legs. The alien like creature seems reasonably camouflaged with their surroundings in the desert. The camera then pans over the rest of the desert, which helps add some authenticity to the footage. What is this creature? Coming in at number 7, we have the grey alien from the Zeta Reticular. Reticuli star system. Zeta Reticuli is supposed to be around 39 light years away from Earth, so if there were aliens there, it would make sense to be in touch with them. Alleged leak footage of top secret UFO and alien probes were uploaded to YouTube in 2011 by Ivan0135. He said that some images he was using were from an anonymous source who wished to remain that way for their own safety. As we can see, the purported alien has a large head and is wearing tight fitted clothing. This is a lot like the often described aliens by alien encounterists. The emblem at the beginning of the footage seems to resemble the Soviet Union's KGB top secret archive logo from the 1960s. Coming into number 6, these alien pictures have only just been made public. In 2017, video footage thought to have been shot in 1992 in Eiger, Switzerland surfaced in the public domain. Apparently discovered on the dark web, the video was labelled as EBE 1992 Eiger. It looks as if the video was shot very quickly in clandestine circumstances, so perhaps a lab worker or research worker hoping to document the secret laboratory without permission. The video is made up of a series of images, most of which look to be of a naked alien body. The alien has a spooky little face and looks to have pale white or grey skin. It seems like the alien is being experimented upon and indeed one of the pictures shows the figure on a wire, leading many to speculate it was electrocuted. Why the footage was lost? for 26 years? We aren't sure, but the real question is, why did it resurface? Did Google Earth capture their first alien abduction? One man swears it did and find out what happened at number 5. In January 2017, a man said that he was abducted by aliens the year before and he could prove it as it was captured and recorded by Google Earth. Do the images finally validate the hundreds, maybe even thousands of historical reports of abductions? John Mooner of Torquay in Devon claims that the images exist of an alien punching him in the face and then abducting him. Here is the satellite image in question. Muna says it clearly shows him being punched as a craft with lights weighted to take him on board. It's grainy, but I guess we could use our imagination here. 
We reached out to Google for a comment but they didn't reply. Do they know of aliens? Were they aware of this image? Or is it a weird fluke? Are these aliens or crash dummies at number 4? While the insides of research facilities should never be photographed due to strict national security rules, one worker at one of these high security facilities chanced it and snapped this photo, saying that the image shows aliens. To me it seems that these aliens were probably nothing but anthropomorphic test dummies. Nonetheless, some still think that these are alien robot creatures hanging on a rack. I personally think it's pretty clear that they aren't, but I guess some people are convinced. This is one of the least convincing on this list though. Does this picture show Roswell Mark II? Coming in at number 3, we have this leaked NASA picture of a flying saucer. Have a look at this. This image taken from the Roswell report looks like a balloon alongside a flying saucer classic alien stuff and exactly what people were saying was an alien spaceship, although the Air Force denied it. This image echoes what people said happened at Roswell. The image seems to have been taken at a training field, also possibly in the New Mexico desert. The image is thought to show a high altitude balloon and the aero shell of a NASA Voyager Mars space probe prior to launch. Only it does look exactly like a flying saucer. The date at the bottom of the image is from the 22nd of August 1967. 20 years after Roswell. Coming into number 2, we have the Atacama Mummy. The Atacama Mummy was discovered in 2003 in the Atacama Desert in Chile. The corpse, named Atta for short, is 6 inches long and has long since baffled scientists as to what exactly it is they're looking at. The miniature mummy body is tiny and deformed, with some thinking it is the remains of a sadly mutated child, with others thinking it's straight up an alien corpse. Professor Hal Crow of the International Journal of Paleopathy wrote that there was no evidence of any deformity, and if anything, the skeleton was normal for whatever creature it belongs to. Others fired criticism at the team examining the skeleton, saying it was unclear how old the corpse is. A lot of people are convinced by the pictures of Atta, they think that it is a true alien skeleton. When did this alien visitation and landing take place? I mean, we just don't know. Finally, coming into number one, we have a cigar shaped shaped spaceship snapped by none other than Neil Armstrong himself. Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon and was under some kind of gagging order or so many conspiracists say. It is reported by some that the astronauts saw UFOs while he was on the Apollo 11 mission. This picture was said to have been taken by the famous explorer himself. Some say the crew of the Apollo mission claimed that they saw bright lights and some kind of object racing them. The image looks somewhat like a cigar shaped aircraft, but when the astronauts got back to Earth, Earth, Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon, reported he saw something moving. He said that lights were there up there with them and that some kind of spacecraft was possibly racing them. Later he backtracked saying there were plenty of explanations as to what that could be. Now was this leaked picture taken by Neil Armstrong and what does it show? To me it kind of looks like Omauma, the cigar shaped comet that passed over Earth in October 2017. Is Omauma actually a spaceship and is it a big government cover up? Maybe. Coming in at number 10, we have a ghost in Cepheus. This looks like a ghost in the ether for sure. It's actually a rather mysterious dusty curtain featuring a very faint reflection of Nebula VDB 152. The reddish tinge you see is ultraviolet light from a star causing a rusty looking luminescence in the nebula dust. Described as a cosmic phantom, this picture was released by NASA on Halloween in 2012 and titled A Ghost in Cepheus. This intergalactic ghost is 1,400 light years away, so arguably a safe enough distance for us to deal with. Who knows how fast this ethereal dust can travel though? Also, who knows what this dust is like up close? I don't trust it. Dust it. Coming in at number 9, we have telescope ghouls. Whoa, 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 look up at the top of the James Webb Space Telescope. Do you see what I see? Are these the ghosts of dead astronauts or technicians? Or maybe they're alien apparitions? This photo by NASA's Chris Gunn is incredible, and he has aptly titled it Ghosts and Mirrors for obvious reasons. So it turns out that the picture taken in the Goddard Space Flight Center's spacecraft, system development, and integration facility clean room is taken with a super long 
strong exposure. All the while ultraviolet lights were being shone over the telescope to look for contamination. Now the result is this spooky picture. Sounds like a reasonable explanation, right? Some may say too reasonable, joking, but this telescope may well capture some spooky images of its very own in the future. It's the successor to Hubble and it's off to explore the universe in March 2021. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there, stand up. How much does this exosolar planet look like the Eye of Sauron at number 8? Like, creepily so. Did J.R.R. Tolkien know about the formal hut when he wrote The Lord of the Rings in 1937? If he didn't, perhaps he foreshadowed it. Get a load of this picture. This is Formal Hout B in orbit around Formal Hout. The exoplanet is also known as Dagon. It's an extrasolar object and it orbits a star that gives it its name. How far away is this terrifying eye formation? Only 25 light years. The 2012 images from the Hubble Space Telescope are terrifying. The name Dagon in mythology is a Jewish deity that represents a half man, half fish. Just a side note there for you. Coming in at number seven, did NASA capture an alien moon base? And also, did they accidentally release pictures of it? Hmm. According to some conspiracists, then yeah, they did. Have a look at these and tell me what you think. Is this alien evidence? Conspiracists YouTube channel Secure Team 10 claim that these images were proof of an alien base on the moon. The YouTube channel has 1.7 million subscribers, so a lot of people are watching their content. Their channel is filled with moon conspiracies and they think that these images are a smoking gun for NASA. UFologist and hoax Buster Scott Brando said that the images used by Secure Team 10 were low quality and low resolution. He seemed to think that the images are just an optical illusion. Who knows though? Another classic from the Daily Express, we have alien astronauts caught on camera at number 6. Some think that Mars rover Curiosity captured aliens, others think that it's a widespread conspiracy that humans are already on Mars. The first manned Mars mission is set to begin within the next 10 years, but some are saying that the photos taken by Curiosity and published by NASA already show that there are humans on the red planet. Some people think that these shadow images show astronauts working on the rover to repair it. Others say that the droids show humanoid looking aliens. Now the conspiracists say that NASA didn't realise how much they were showing when the images were released into the public domain. So is it aliens or are humans already up on Mars? If so, why would that be hidden from us? Or do these pictures have a more logical explanation? UFO UFO conspiracist good old Scott C. Waring said that this just goes to show the public that the rover is being maintained by humans on Mars and that there are other spacecraft kept secret from the public that can carry peers to Mars in just a few minutes. You know what Scott, I don't know about that one. Okay, these death eaters living out there in space terrify me at number 5. The Harry Potter fans in this video will probably be just as freaked out by this as I am. I don't like them. Get a load of what is lurking in the mist of the Carina Nebula. To me, these are straight up Death Eaters waiting to suck out my soul. But actually, they're supposed to be knots of dark molecular gas. Knots of dark molecular gas waiting to suck out my soul, right? These clouds of gas surround the Great Nebula in Carina, which used to be one of the brightest stars in the sky in the 1800s, but now it's significantly faded. This maybe lends credence to my whole sucking theory, right? Okay, fine, they probably aren't Death Eaters, but still, they're spooky. This picture freaks me out. Coming into number four, we have the Hand of God. NASA released this X-ray image of light detected by NASA's Chanda X-ray Observatory in 2014. Can you see why they called it the Hand of God? Because it kind of looks like, you know. So this is actually a pulsar wind nebula, a stellar corpse that spins rapidly, firing a particle wind. NASA themselves are mystified by the shape. Alongside the image on their website, they wrote, One of the big mysteries of this object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way to make it look like a hand, or if the material is in fact shaped like a hand. Now a lot of people do genuinely believe that this is God's mark in the universe, like the eye that cropped up earlier. Now I'm not too convinced, but I'd love to know what you think. Ah, uh, we have a famous Mars picture that caused a stir at number 3. We have Bigfoot on Mars. Mars's now defunct robot rover Spirit captured this image in late 2007. Who this? A rudy nudie alien lady or Bigfoot? Either way, aliens, right? This image boosted the life on Mars discussion, with many conspiracists saying that this image was proof. NASA explained the image is simply the paradelia phenomena. This is where humans see faces when they aren't there. 
analysing Spirit's image, if this was an alien, it'd be pretty small, according to Phil Platt of Bad Astronomy website. Anyway, NASA says it's nothing more than a Martian rock, although NASA would say that, wouldn't they? Probably because it is just a rock, right? Coming into number two, we have this screaming skull. It's pretty terrifying. This screaming skull was another of NASA's Halloween releases, this time from the year 2000. The haunting image was taken from the orbiting Chandra Observatory and is one of a cluster of galaxies known as Perseus. You can see Perseus right here in X ray vision. The Perseus cluster contains thousands upon thousands of galaxies, so we can't really truly comprehend this picture. It's just much more than a spooky picture than what looks like a skull, it's a lot going on there. While the image is already pretty spooky, it gets scarier when you realise that the bright spot in the x-ray is a black hole. Not to worry though, this scary skull cluster is 320 million light years away. Finally at number 1, we have a truly iconic and somewhat infamous picture, the Viking 1 faces on Mars. This is one of the most famous NASA images out there and has been used as absolute fear fuel to conspiracy theorists fire over the past 40 years, that was since the picture was taken in July 1976. The snap was taken by NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft and seemed to show the shadowy likeness of a human face, only this face is 2 miles long. Taken in the Cydonia region of Mars, the image was sent back to mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Lab. At the time, theorists went wild saying that it was evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars. Now the image did quite look like an Egyptian pharaoh after all. NASA explained that the image was just a Martian messer with the sunlight playing tricks. NASA later went back with the Mars orbiter camera, but people simply explained the lack of face that time by saying that it was a cloudy day and the alien detail couldn't be seen. I don't know, I'm thinking it probably was just a trick of the light. 